Banking, welcome to this video out our learning curve and we're going to have a look at um, the swooping hawks in this video. So uh, first up, modelling point of view. Uh, my guys here, they're all metal models. Obviously they're all fine cast now. Um, there's some cool stuff that you can do with the fine cast because it's much lighter. You can maybe have them on little, little uh, wires and stuff so you can have them all at different heights which would look pretty cool. I've seen that done. Um, but I haven't done that on mine just, just because they're metal basically. Um, the XART only comes with one option, um, being obviously a fixed model. We'll talk about the XART and his uh, options later. So yeah, that's it from modelling point of view. Um, let's have a look at from the from the gaming point of view. So, how are we going to use these guys? Now I know there's um, when you look at the book, there's an obvious thing that they are designed to take out vehicles. Um, you know, haywire grenades. Wow. Um, if you can actually get these these guys attacking a vehicle, fantastic. You're guaranteed to take them out. But to be totally honest with you, it's not going to happen. Um, strength 3, toughness 3, the gun's strength 3, okay, they can deep strike. I mean, the only way really that you're going to do it is if you're able to deep strike totally out of sight of anything. Um, and then use your, your jump movement to get into range. Um, if you can do that, you might destroy a tank. When the tank explodes, you're going to die. 4 plus save, toughness 3, and if you explode that tank, um, you know, you're going to die. But, yeah, so I wouldn't actually use these for destroying tanks at all, because um, they have a few extra really good options which suit 6th edition really well. And that's quite interesting because I did a poll on my blog um, in fifth, during 5th fifth edition and the Sweeping Hawks were deemed as the worst unit in the Codex. But now 6th edition have come out, lots and lots of people are starting to use these and these are the reason why. So, the Exart, you can give this guy um, Sky Leap for 15 points and that's what you're going to do. Forget Intercept. Uh, the intercept, okay, is fantastic for helping you take out vehicles, but you don't need it because you're not going to use them for taking out vehicles. And forget having a large squad. So you'll see on my guys here, I've got these with uh, rocks on their base, and these guys haven't. And the reason why I've done that is so I can split them into two units of five of them. I've actually done a second exart. There we go. So, yeah, unit of five. Uh, minimum amount of points that you can put into these guys the better and what we're going to do is we're going to use that sky leap now yes you can hold these guys in reserve and then come on potentially turn two on a good dice roll um, ideally if you can actually deploy these like, right behind a little piece of terrain um, on turn one and then when it's your turn one you can sky leap in the air then you're guaranteed to come out turn two so as long as you can get on the board and um, deploy and not actually have them destroyed then that's well worthwhile because at least you get full use of the template and that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to come down, you're going to target those long fangs, target um, just just the, and basically you're going to in, annoy your opponent by targeting their units with the massive pie template and there's nothing they can do about it because you are also going to jump back up so after every turn you're going to jump back up you're going to use that template now the template isn't going to kill much you might get lucky but it's unlikely that it's going to kill much but it is going to annoy your opponent and that's where you're going to use these to your advantage so there's two ways of using these end of game of course they can come down in your opponent's deployment zone uh, enabling you to get line breaker now you might have other units in your army. You might have a jet bike unit, you know, massive unit, uh, massive movement, and you can get li line breaker with them. So you don't need them for line breaker. But it could be that you might need them for something else. And this is where I think they come into their own. You're going to annoy your opponent with these so much that on turn five, you're going to come down right in front of the unit that you've been annoying. So let's say you've got some long fangs back here. You're going to come down here, you're going to come down, you're going to basically make out, oh it's turn 5, you know, I don't need to, to like, leap back up. 
and you're just going to leave your guys there. Now maybe you have an objective like in the middle of the board with some, let's say, some Dire Avengers on. Maybe you've only got five or six Dire Avengers left on this objective. Now your Long Fangs, or your opponent's Long Fangs, have got to make a choice. The chances are that they will see these here and think, my god, these, these things here, they've been like, targeting me all game and really been annoying me. This is my opportunity to kill them and with any luck they're going to target these as opposed to shooting your troops now of course it's a long shot it's um... It's psychological warfare as such but yeah I mean it works um, especially if you have two units of hawks coming down you're really really annoying your opponent um, you know doing that technique is actually quite useful so yeah, uh, Sweeping Hawks, uh, another very good distraction annoying unit that the Eldar have. Lots of trickery there as usual. Um, personally, from my experience, I would say forget going for t tanks, forget the grenade packs and all that stuff. Just um, concentrate on Sky Leap, um, Line Breaker, Distraction and potentially Annoyance. Okay, there you go, that's the Sweeping Hawks done. And uh, next up, we're going to have a look at Vipers.